Hello again, this is Dr. Ali McGabel and we're doing Emerging Wireless Systems. This is part of the Wireless Communications course. Uh, in the last video, we discussed the current technologies and today we look at the emerging, or in this video, look at the emerging wireless systems. Emerging systems. This includes green communication, green communication, or energy constrained radio, software defined radio, cognitive radio, millimeter wave, massive MIMO, uh, wireless sensor networks, uh, distributed control networks, Li-Fi, and other applications in health, biomedicine, and neuroscience. This is just part of a list, a long list, with some buzzwords that are expected in the future of communication as a result of the increasing data rate and um, scarce bandwidth availability, and we need to find a solution for all of that. Those topics can be very well your choice as a presentation at the end of, of, of the course, but we'll just touch on them, like highlight one slide per topic. Green communication, energy efficient communication technologies that are primarily developed for addressing the environmental impact of traditional communication systems and networks. So we need to come up with solutions that reduce the power consumption to save the earth. Um, also known as energy constraint radio, where you have to constrain your energy. Remember that reducing the range, short range network, could be one, but one solution because shortening the range could mean less power. However, we need to consider both the transmitted power and the required processing power. So it's not just the transmitted power, but also the circuits that are used for communication. Sophisticated encoding, decoding, not always energy efficient. A MIMO using multiple input, multiple outputs could result, result in more energy requirements. Slow transmission that's taking more time. It's not necessarily optimal. Multi-hub routing using to reduce power so we can have multi-hub. We send from one hub to another until we get to the destination. But this is also not certainly optimal. And one possible solution is to, to reduce the sampling rate because sampling in digital communications is related to to power consumption and it's related to the bandwidth so if we have if we can reduce sampling that would be a solution so this is one area one very important area of research and with the kingdom vision of 2030 we are looking at uh, this as an important uh, factor reducing the power consumption software defined radio instead of having everything in hardware now the trend is to go to software. We have some of these software defined radios in our labs, where instead of designing um, dedicated ICs or circuits for cellular, Bluetooth, uh, other applications, WiMAX, WLAN, uh, we can have just one generic software with DSP, with digital, uh, digital uh, signal processor, an analog digital converter will convert everything into a digital. So wideband antennas, we'll use wideband antennas that span the required band with, of course, we need high sampling rate to be able to cover more bandwidth. So these are characterized by power, bandwidth, and carrier frequency. So we can have some of these which are uh, generic and then we can program them. These are software defined radio. So this can work as a mobile phone, as a radio, or whatever. So this is called software and defined radio, and that enables cognitive radio, which we're going to see in the next slide. Cognitive radio supports new users in existing crowded spectrum, where you have many different users. So one possibility is to be smart, cognitive, and find where there is a gap in the spectrum, which is very crowded, then use that gap. So this requires your device to be adaptable. It should be software defined, so it can switch from one band to one other band, one technology, one technique to another. So utilize advanced communication and digital signal processing technique, coupled with novel spectrum allocation policies. So we will have main users and then we have secondary users. The main user is the one that is paying for the spectrum. Others would like to use the spectrum when it's not being really used. But of course, we should not degrade the licensed user. So there are different ways of doing it under relay and uh, under uh, underlay or overlay or interweave. You can coexist with ex with users, and then we can use transmit with a very minimum power below the interference threshold, or we can over 
hear them and then we can be part of their communication. So these are different ways underlay where you you send below the interference interweave where you where you try to find empty time slot empty frequency or or coding slot and then communicate or overlay where you overhear the messages and you, you are part of it where you transmit and you coexist with it this is an entire topic that we're just showing you the idea and then it could be one of your choices as a, a term pro, a term presentation millimeter wave a millimeter wave refers to the wavelength and we know that frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional so when we say millimeter wave we usually talk about tens of gigahertz of bandwidth available at high frequency it's above one gigahertz some people are talking about six gigahertz some seven gigahertz even 60 and 70 gigahertz so this is just part of the spectrum that i am showing here usually millimeter wave require MIMO systems because the propagation characteristics of high frequency signals are not as good so we use multiples of antennas which we call multi-input multi-output systems to make up for that so millimeter wave and massive MIMO are two different technologies but they come together millimeter wave have large non monotonic path loss so they, they have bad propagation characteristics so we need we need to understand their channel model we need to understand how they propagate and then find mitigation techniques so uh, they are perfect for massive MIMOs and the bottleneck is the channel estimation because you have multiple antennas and you need to know what is the channel between every single antenna or estimate the channel between every single antenna and, and the device more about this will be understood as I said we are just touching on the topics here wireless sensor networks uh, sensors you know sensors they could be used for earthquake for bridge health monitoring and they are wireless and then we talk about a lot of them we need to collect data and then uh, use them so we have application including smart homes smart structure uh, search and rescue missions homeland security event detection battlefield surveillance and then seismic surveys the characteristics from the communication perspective energy transmit and processing is is definitely a constraint because we have lots of them data flows and they are wireless so you don't want to to lose the battery quickly data flows to centralize the location so we need a huge amount of data joint compression is a requirement in many cases low power nodes rate low data rate low power node low data rate per node and then um, we have tens of thousands of these nodes they're all de low data rate in most of the cases intelligence is or should be in the network rather than just being in the device because they have lots of sensors and we have to be to have an intelligent network ad hoc and self-organizing uh, networks uh, with these networks the topic of ad hoc networks which is not centralized and um, is an issue so we think about self-organizing uh, networks and then whenever you go into the network topics you talk you talk about routing what is the best route that you are routing what's the best route that you have to trace topology how to connect the mesh star connection so on those are beyond the scope but uh, just to give you an idea what some of the new technologies and the trade-off required between capacity coverage when building ad hoc networks ad hoc which means non-centralized peer-to-peer networks no backbone or infrastructure or centralized control distributed control over wireless in lots of the industries they are afraid of using control controlling things using wireless because of um, it could be hacked it could be this and that because of being wireless but the trend is to go into using wireless and distributed control and this includes requirements like um, control requires fast accurate and reliable feedback wireless networks introduce delay and losses so we need a reliable network and robust controllers that we can rely on we don't want to get the signal after the fact so uh, some of the applications that you might be aware of including controlling cars car, av car, car collision avoidance could be done using wireless airplanes and UAVs and manned aerial vehicles drones insect flies with cameras and so on so all these are uh, trending applications or emerging applications Li-Fi using light as a wireless communication whether optical light visible light whether um, laser uh, we we can use Li-Fi as a wireless optical um, networking technology that uses light emitting diodes or lasers 
to transmit data. Li-Fi uses LEDs, light emitting diodes. Li-Fi is designed to be used with lighting, so when you're moving in the house, there are lights, and then you use them not just for lighting, but also for communicating with data. Of course, once you go into light, you have huge bandwidth, and you can download or upload in a very um, fast rate or high rate. So comparing Li-Fi with Wi-Fi, existing Wi-Fi, would show a difference. Light reflects from the, from the side over Wi-Fi, propagate into um, next rooms. Whether this is good or bad, something is to be argued. Uh, keep in your mind that Li-Fi may not qualify to our definition as a wireless technology because we mentioned the bandwidth, but the principle is the same. So Wi-Fi is a wireless technology. Uh, let's conclude with some applications in health, biomedicine, and neuroscience. You know, you just need to know that inside your wire, things are connected in just in the same exact way uh, we are using uh, wireless communication or wired communication. So if there is any problem with the body, we could have wireless body area networks where we have lots of sensors connected. Now, most of us has already uh, smart watches where we get the heartbeats and, and breathing activities and so on. So we could have more as a time elapsed and these are all networked together. If there's a problem with the neuro, with the uh, nerves, uh, God forbid, then we can use uh, those wireless technologies as a mean to recover from nerve damage. So uh, there are already some successful attempts for, with people who are really paralyzed and then they start uh, having some uh, limited activities. You can extend this to measuring the brain activities in gaming and communication, brain to brain, brain to machine, and so on, signal processing, nerve networks, EEG and ECG, uh, signal processing control, deep brain simulation, signal processing, communications of light and, and, and bioscience. So just think of your body as a set of transmitter receiver sensors connected together. That is, I leave the, the rest for your imagination. So I just want share, wanted to share with this with you so you can find some topics for your final presentation. You can pick one of these, but the final presentation should not be an advertisement, should not be as short as this. It should be technically deep. That's that's using some electro electrical engineering, communication engineering, terminologies, numbers, and so on. Okay, so please now share with us in the comment section. Uh, please share your thoughts. Give us some more topics that we did not uh, f we forget to add, and we might add them in in coming videos. Please write in the comment section some of the t emerging technologies and communications that you think we did not touch on. Thank you very much for being good listeners. So thanks. We'll see you in coming videos.